Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of our five-part series on Mary, our mother, star of the new evangelization. Thank you, Monsignor Heng. Hi, children. I'm Audrey. I'm back with you today. And last week, we actually reflected on Mary, the mother of God. And we also reflected on the mystery and the birth of Jesus and how we've been made in his image and in his likeness. And the most perfect of all creation is us. God created us as his children. So now let's prepare our hearts as we listen to the word of God. Today, let us consider the account of the presentation. You may wish to take your Bibles and read along. This account is found in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 38. I invite you to light a candle before I proclaim the Word of God to remind us that Jesus, who came into the world, is the light of the world that dispels the darkness of sin, evil, and death, and shares his light of truth love and blessings with us. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And when the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord observing what stands written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God. And he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promise, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people, Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, you see this child, his destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many will be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years, her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now take a moment to let the Word of God touch our hearts. Oh, 
Last week, we heard that when Jesus was born, the good news was first proclaimed to the shepherds, who were the poorest of the poor in Israel. This week, we hear that the birth of Christ is revealed to Simeon and Anna, who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Upon encountering Jesus, Simeon was led by the Holy Spirit to proclaim God's goodness and God's faithfulness. What we heard proclaimed in scripture and the song we just heard is Simeon's beautiful song of praise and joy. Did you know Simeon's song has a special name? It is called Nun Dimitis. In Latin, it means now let depart or dismiss. This is a prayer of the church used since the fourth century. This is a prayer that many of us can pray at night just before we go to bed. Today's reflection on the fourth joyful mystery, the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple, is celebrated as the feast of the presentation of the Lord on the 40th day after Christmas, on the 2nd of February every year. This is to mark the Jewish law of Moses that every firstborn son is to be consecrated to the Lord on the 40th day of his birth in the temple of Jerusalem. In the Jewish practice, every firstborn son belongs to God and is consecrated to the service of God. However, for some time, the practice was that such a service of God was only reserved for the firstborn son of the tribe of Levi. And so this means that Jewish firstborn son who do not belong to this tribe of Levi cannot be of service to God. As such, this right of redemption is needed to redeem the firstborn son so that he can be of service to God. For this, a pair of turtle doves or pigeons or a lamb for those who can afford and five shekels or silver have to be paid together with the prayer rituals at the temple of Jerusalem. However, strictly speaking, the child Jesus, as the Messiah, he need not go through the rite of redemption. But Joseph, being a devout Jew, followed the law that was prescribed, as not to do so would create problems for the family. This feast is also called the Feast of Candlemas. It symbolizes that Jesus, the Messiah, is the light of the world. And so candles that are brought to be used for the rest of the year are brought to the church to be blessed during the Mass. The presentation of the child Jesus in the temple has other beautiful truths that we can reflect on. Prophet Simeon was a holy and devout man. His deepest desires and goal of his life was to receive the spiritual consolation of the blessing and honor of being able to see 
the promised Messiah. God has promised him that his deepest desires will be fulfilled. So throughout his life, Prophet Simeon was daily waiting for this most precious moment to arrive. And so, when he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple on the day when Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus to the temple and actually saw the child Jesus with great joy, he prays ah. a very beautiful prayer called the Nun Dimitis. And in this beautiful prayer, Prophet Simeon says, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. Prophet Simeon, as proclaimed in today's gospel, then prophesied to Mary that her child Jesus would bring salvation to all peoples, but would also at the same time bring much suffering and painful challenges, especially for those who reject him and his gospel of eternal salvation. Prophetess Anna, uh -huh. being a holy woman, spent her days praying and fasting in the temple of Jerusalem. And at the age of 84, she was blessed to see the Messiah child Jesus. She praised God and proclaimed to everyone with great joy and zeal the presence of the child Jesus who is the Messiah. In Pope Francis's reflection, he shares with us his insight that the coming together of Mary and Joseph and Prophet Simeon and Prophetess Anna is a profound encounter of two young parents and two elderly people, all brought together by Jesus. He says, Jesus brings together and unites people of different generations, and he is the fullness of love that helps everyone overcome our selfishness, self-pity, and sadness. Pope Francis adds that as a family, we share so many beautiful moments of meals, rest, housework, leisure, prayers, vacation, pilgrimages, and mutual support. However, if there is no love, then there will be no joy because our deep and genuine love comes from Jesus. And so children, do remember that Jesus is in your heart and in your home. And Jesus wants to share his love with you and with everyone in your home. And this includes your mommy, your daddy, your brothers and sisters, and everyone in the home, including your grandparents and your helper and everyone. So children, this is what you can do. You can speak to Jesus who is in your heart and he will inspire you to love everyone and help everyone in the home to experience his love. When you speak to Jesus, listen with your heart and try to feel his love and peace. Jesus will also inspire and encourage you to love everyone in your home. And when you are able to love everyone, then you and everyone will be filled with the joy of Jesus. If you try this often and even every day, then I am sure you will be a very happy person. Okay? Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who can help us to do this. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus in us and in others. Like Simeon and Anna, we are called to be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit to help us recognize the presence of Jesus in our lives. And when we are touched by the presence of Jesus in our lives, we cannot but want to share Him with our loved ones 
and our friends because we are excited by what he has done for us. When Mary presented Jesus in the temple, it must have been a joyous moment. At the same time, Prophet Simeon prophesied that a sword will pierce her heart, giving a glimpse of what was to come of Jesus' passion and death on the cross. We could say that Mary truly experienced the joys and the sorrows as a mother. As she stood at the foot of the cross, she stood strong and courageously, even as she experienced the suffering of watching her son on the cross. Therefore, we are comforted and assured that we have a mother who stands with us in our suffering, our problems, our fears, and who is always ready to plead our cause with her son, Jesus. So today, we can all reflect on Mary's role as our mother of perpetual health. Some of you may be more familiar with her title as Our Lady of Perpetual Succor. Succor means help. The word perpetual means unending and never ceasing. We call Mary our mother of perpetual help because we are sure of her unending and unceasing help. And we also know that Mary our mother is always hastening to come to our aid. We rejoice because we have our mother Mary to pray with us and for us. Today, let us reflect on first, how can I love those in my family and those around me more? Second, which aspect of my life do I want to seek Mother Mary's intercession for? Fun fact, children. In Latin, succursus means to help, to be of assistance. Sucurere in Latin means to run to help or come to the aid of someone. As we hear more faith stories today, may they help our faith in God grow stronger. So I wear a rosary ring. And um, it reminds me to pray the rosary daily. And the rosary for me is really um, a weapon. Right. And it was was um, Father Jerome who said that um, the evil one calls it poo. So yeah, it's very, it's terrible, right? But the evil one is so afraid of the rosary. It just goes to show how much power there is in the Hail Mary, in the rosary. And for me, you know, the rosary is a weapon of protection because in times of danger, of spiritual warfare, I pray the rosary and I actually feel safe. And I know that I am safe. As a cradle Catholic, I would say that I always know that Jesus is God, but Jesus as God was always very distant. It's like, oh, is here, and then God is there. And I was very much a nerd when I was in primary school. Yeah, I really loved to read books, and I was a librarian for a little while, and I joined the library because the barcode scanners were really cool. So that was the kind of mindset, you know, I had as a primary school child. I was part of the Lectus, um, the Children's Lectus at Nativity. And um, prior to that, um, in primary school, I was part of like Children's Liturgy also. Um, but I remember that after confirmation, for some reason, that was when like I stopped being active in church. And I never knew too that community was important. In fact, like, I just kind of like was a Catholic that just like, okay, go to Mass every Sunday. Yeah. I remember an incident where I was bullied in school and my friends were calling me names. And it was quite terrible because when I went to the bathroom once, they actually poured water into the bathroom when I was in the toilet cubicle. And um, it was very scary because I remember that I thought something was wrong with me. I thought that I had a problem 
I thought that I looked weird or I thought that my nose was too big. Can you believe? I actually thought that when I was a child. And I remember feeling so afraid that like of how I looked or how I was because I was bullied. And you know, there was a time when it was very, 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 very dark and I really doubted myself and it was really scary because I didn't know like how to face, you know, like my schoolmates. Because the scary thing is you never know when you'll be bullied again. I remember just asking God. And at the time, probably as a young child, I wasn't aware that I was asking the Holy Spirit, you know. I just said, help me. And you know what happened? Like there was this slip of the switch that happened in my mind. And for some reason, I felt like, okay, you know, like, I'll, I, will, I will learn to be brave, right? But you know what happened after that? I told my mom. I told my mom what happened. And you know what my mom did? My mom actually went to speak to one of the girls. Because one of the girls was from my catechism class. And then, you know what happened after that? My mom went to ask her what they were doing with me, to me. And then, the girls came and confronted me in the tuck shop. One day. And I was so freaked out because I was like, these three girls who are like bullying me came to me and then they said, why do you, why do you tell your mom? You could have just told us. And I looked at her, I'm like, I tell my mom everything. And then they walked away. And guess what? They stopped bullying me after that. I know that Our Lady was praying and is praying for me and at that very painful situation. I also know that, you know, Our Lady probably inspired my mom to take the lead, to go and talk to this bully, right? And I encourage, I encourage the parents also to stand up for their children who are being bullied. You know what's the beautiful thing after? One of the bullies actually pinged me on um, Facebook Messenger and the bully actually said sorry. And you know what's really interesting about that? When I reflected on that, I realised too, in my primary school, I called a girl name. We called this girl like garlic breath. And it was very mean on hindsight. But then, you know, I realised that, yeah, I had to also go and ask forgiveness, right, from this friend. Today, Mother Mary, for me, is someone so personal and so real, right? And I mean personal and real because in many ways, whenever I pray, and ask for her help, I have actually a response. And I know that she's always praying for me. So in a way, it's like she's my spiritual mother, right? She's our spiritual mother. She is mother to all of us who really cares for our welfare and our well-being. Because I will always go to Novena when I had trouble. And even the days when there's no trouble, you know, we go for Novena devotion. But somehow or rather, it's Novena and it's like Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Knowing that I was brought there to that place to experience the love of Jesus, perhaps, and I know in my heart, it was through her intercession. So knowing that my Mary is like that person that I can count on and rely on, like that's who Our Lady is to me today. Children and families, I hope the beautiful and inspiring stories that we just heard spoke to you and touched your heart as they touched mine and inspired mine. Let us now pray the Memorare to remind us that we have Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help, to pray and plead for us to God on our behalf. Remember, O Most Gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, Hear and answer me. Amen. Dear children and parents, in today's activity, we're going to show you how you can make craft flowers and shower Mother Mary with your flowers of praise.
Once you've completed your artwork, you can submit a photo of your beautiful flowers from Mother Mary here. Dear children, we invite you also to put your prayer intentions here. And if you will, also take time to read through the different prayer intentions of our brothers and sisters. And you know what you can do too? You can also pray for our brothers and sisters. And together as a body of Christ, we can unite in prayer for one another. And we also invite you once again to join me in creating a virtual rosary this month of May. Send us one decade of the rosary with your family. We invite you children and your family to do something every day during the week to share the gift of Jesus with others and draw them closer to God. We encourage everyone to rise to the challenge as a family, encouraging and cheering each other on. For this week's challenge, we invite you and your families to pray the Memorare in the week. Or to pray the Nun Dimitis as a family prayer for the week. As we sing the next song together, let us express our love for Mother Mary with the flowers we made for her. So when we love Mother Mary and when we pray to her and ask her to pray for us, one good way is always to bring flowers. And so when we present flowers to Mary, our mother, we are telling her and expressing our affection and love for her and gratitude. What better way than to add to our prayers by this beautiful symbol of offering flowers to her.
thank you for joining us and see you again next week. And may our Blessed Mother protect you and your family now and always. Take care and God bless you. Remember to say your prayers and thank you and God bless.